This podcast is brought to you by Thor Bullets. Thor Bullets are a premium full-bore muzzleloader bullet designed specifically for modern inline rifles. Thor Bullets do not require plastic sabos or belts to be fired, meaning less cleaning for you between shots. The patented copper base creates an airtight seal, giving you greater distance and accuracy. Thor's unique engineering allows the bullets to retain 95% of their weight upon impact, and the controlled expansion ensures large, easy-to-follow blood trails. Thor bullets are currently available in a 50 caliber version that is sized to your specific bore. Thor is also expanding into a new 45 caliber bullet designed for faster 1 in 24 and 1 in 22 twist inline rifles. For more information on these great bullets, visit www.thorbullets.com. We'd like to thank Thor Bullets for their sponsorship of this podcast. Welcome back to the Muzzle Blast Podcast, the official podcast of the National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association. This week, we're talking with Jamie Hancherick. Jamie is a representative from Knight Rifles stationed out on the East Coast. He manages and handles a lot of shops and sales contacts out there, but he's also an avid outdoorsman involved in everything involving the outdoors, but he shoots almost exclusively muzzleloaders. So it's going to be a good one. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Jamie has an interesting background in machining and as it relates to muzzleloaders. So without further ado, here's the show. Hello, Ethan. Hey, Jamie. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day. I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. It's a little rainy out here, but uh, it's not too bad. Well, that's good. So, are you? Can't where complain. are you? Um, where are you located out in the country? I actually live in uh, the eastern shore of Maryland, okay. right off uh, Chesapeake Bay. Okay. Top uh, northeastern part of the Ches- Chesapeake Bay, up there by the canal. Okay. Between, it borders Delaware. Must be pretty yeah. beautiful there on the bay. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of waterway. And that's <laughs> uh, the reason I moved down here because I we love the water. And always got to have something to do with a boat and water and hunting and shooting and everything. So it all goes hand in hand. It's really, really nice. I, we like it. That's <laughs> awesome. I, I see you post a lot of fishing stuff online. And I'm, I'm, I'll admit I'm real jealous. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get to the point where I, I see I, I'm I'm type person. I'm like a total, total outdoorsman or whatever. I, I mm-hmm. go by the seasons. I'm not strictly one thing. I, you know, right now it's a uh, early bass season and then striper season really hits right now. Yeah. And when you can go out and get 40, 50 inch stripers, I mean, that's, you, you gotta go. Wow. <laughs> and that's where they're at. They're right here in Maryland. So you gotta go. And then I, I you know, I, and then what'll happen is uh, I'll go, you know what, I'm going to go up to the range and mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm a member of a range up in Lancaster PA and I go up there for a day and I go up there and shoot and I try to talk to people that, you know, have like little problems or something like that. And I, I show all the stuff that I have from night and all that. And they're really, I just try to help the people that, you know, have a lot of questions. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm, I'm more interested in. Like, uh, I'm not really a high technical guy that I'll tell you everything about a bullet. It's more or less, I get, I could show you the basics. I can, Look, this is what works with me. You start with the gun. You start with the good bullets. Start with the uh, good powder, and that. But other than that, you know, I know what I know what works, and then I I will not use something that's not working. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think like I'm kind of the same way. If I mean, I kind of take it to take it back to fishing here a little bit. If I'm casting and nothing's biting, you know, I'm switching I'm switching lures and trying something different. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a uh, it's I I found. Through muzzleloader, I mean, I started when I was a little kid, uh, not a little kid, but 16 years old, and we didn't have no clue what we were doing. My yeah. brother bought a flintlock, and it was just something to get an extra season up in Pennsylvania. And I took it out, and of course, we didn't clean it right, and I got the bullet starter stuck. Oh. And so that ended my hunt that day, and mm-hmm. I got mad. I was mad. I, I cannot believe this. This is a wooden piece. So then I'm a machinist by trade. So I took that part and made another part and I, you know, constructed what I what I actually invented and started my own business with. But it took me all the way back to then to get so mad that I broke things. And that's that's how I, everything evolved, even to where I'm at with the designing at night. It's because I, all the stuff that broke that, that, that doesn't work. And I tried to make it a little better. Yeah. Well, that's that, awesome. That, that's what I like about it. I think that's something that um, I really enjoy about muzzleloading and uh, 
really just kind of the base level outdoorsmanship. I mean, I can't afford, you know, the super high quality stuff, but it's kind of nice because I can tinker and I can work on the things that I have. And, and like you say, you can work on things and try to make them better and, you know, be a real hands on with it. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I, I, we had no clue what we were doing. And then it, it just, it makes me mad that, you know, here, here, a lot of the stuff that you, even these people I hear all the time at the shows is, oh, what, what kind of gun do you have for cleaning? What kind of gun do you have? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're either going to buy a gun that shoots or do you want a gun that clean, you can clean easy. <laughs> that's my, that's my, my thing is, yeah, we have guns that can shoot and they're proven to shoot. And I'm not going to sit there and try to sell you a gun that that's, uh, you know, for good for cleaning. I go, I'm telling you, this gun's good. You take it out. You'd use this. It's going to, it's going to put you should be able to shoot holes out. Yeah. And other than that, if, if you're coming up to me and telling me you're, you, you got problems cleaning, I can tell you what you're, what you're using. You're probably using pellets and they, from what I've known in industry that, uh, you know, they use a glue into it in order mm -hmm. to make it a pellet. Yeah. So that's, you're already starting in the hole already. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're making it harder on yourself every mm -hmm. single time you do it. And that's what I try to, when we were out in the shows, I try to convince people and people will look at me like, well, I've used these for years. I, can, I never said you can't use them. But this is a problem. You're telling me you got a problem because you need to clean it. So it, there, there's, there's your reason right there. You're already starting off with the wrong powder maybe. And this is I'm, I'm help, trying to help you into it. I want people to shoot. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I make money off, off, off of the products we sell too. Yeah. So, hey, if you shoot and everybody shoots, you're, I, I'm making money and that's what I want. And I'm not going to try to steer you wrong, and but this is sometimes but I think that some of the basics that people just don't understand and they get caught up into this. I've seen it on TV. I've seen it on TV. And yep. it, some of that stuff, uh, it's, you got to go back to the old traditional stuff too. I mean, it's, it, it either works or it doesn't. And just be, it could be a gimmick and all that stuff. So uh, that's what I try to, I try to make it easy. I, if, if it was, I even look at it like I don't, like to shoot i mean i i do shoot but i don't like to shoot without a breech plug that comes out the end mm -hmm. i like to clean it like a shotgun or like a rifle and to me that's easy i I put the time in and, you know i i'll do you know what, what i have to do with like traditional stuff but i just like that it, it, it's a less of a headache to me i'm just not i don't have the patience for it like i said what'll happen i'll start breaking stuff and mm -hmm. then I got to really find stuff. It really takes me a long time to find it. I'm not that type of person. You know, I got to have a fix and I fix it and it, I move on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to spend hours and hours, you know, trying to fix something that didn't need fixed. Yeah. And that's what I don't know. I, I get on those uh, little tantrums, not tantrums, but I talk about that when we're at the shows, I'm just trying to help. But look, just stick with the basics. Try this. We got proven guys over here. We'll work for night rifles there. I mean, they're, they're uh, the pro staffers. I mean, they shoot groups, not even groups. They shoot holes out of 500 yards. I mean, yeah. I can't do that, <laughs> but they do it. And I'm, I'm listening to them guys and what they say, I'm not going to try to dispute them or try to say, you know, well, I, I like to use this just because you like to use it doesn't mean it works. So. Yeah. That's something that I spend uh, and I've seen you on there a lot is on some of the forums and some of the Facebook groups and things that are really popular for muzzleloaders right now. And sometimes I get real frustrated seeing people asking or giving advice that I just, I struggle to understand where it comes from uh, when there's, yeah. when there's information out there that's really solid and it's just, I guess, harder to find than just being on Facebook. I guess it's easier to find or ask a question there and get a hundred responses over going out and finding, you know, somebody that really knows what they're talking about. Yeah. M m most of the time when I, when I comment on there, it's like, you know, kind of, like I said, kind of the basics. It's like, look, I could tell you the powder, this is what you use and you should be shooting this and this. Now we get into the bullets and all that stuff. We got guys on there that um, do this for a living and they get yeah. paid for it by different bullet manufacturers and even the, uh, the powder and all that stuff. I can't get into that. These guys can tell you exactly. And that's where I go to them. I'll go, Hey, uh, this guy here is he's having a problem with this. I don't know what he means, so I switch it over to them. Mm -hmm. I try to stick with what I I know, and I just try to know the basics and try to you know. 
I, I learned from the past that you hit you you at least have to do it right. You at least have to, to clean the thing right, clean yeah. the gun right. Yeah. It it has to be a procedure. I mean it it you have to do the basics. If you don't have the basics, you're gonna you're not gonna want to shoot. And a lot of people say, Oh, I only shoot three three times a year just to sight it in. Well, that's not okay, I get it. But if you really you 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 real I shoot sometimes 20, 30 times on the range mm -hmm. and I don't have to clean it at all because I'm using the right powder. Okay. And that Blackhorn 209, you just don't do not have to clean. And you got these, the, the little better guns that got the better materials on them. They don't rust. Yeah. I mean, I have a four year old gun that it has not a single pit on it at all. And, but I do, when I get done shooting, I go home and clean it. Yeah. So it's, you got to do, you, you at least got to do the basics, I think. And yeah. that's what frustrates me more than anything. I use three pellets and 150 grains. I go, oh man, you're, it's not 150 grains, yeah. but <laughs> I always got to hold myself back by saying to stop, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Let's slow down and let's, yeah. let, I think that's what's, uh, it's intimidating for a lot of people, but it's also what's kind of neat about muzzle loading is even if you're shooting, you know, the modern inlines, kind of the race guns, the super guns, there is a lot of, you know, nods in the traditional space that are important. Like, yeah, if you're shooting, you know, the Pyrodex or the triple seven and the powder itself, but also when you get into the pellets, you have to go back to kind of the traditional cleaning regimen or else yes, it's your, yes. your whole time is just going to be miserable. And I think a lot of people either on purpose or by accident, you know, like you say, don't clean it. And that totally ruins their experience of muzzle loading when an extra 15, 20 minutes after you're done shooting, you know, makes all the difference. It makes it mm -hmm. that investment that you've put out front, not a total waste. And it's something that you can enjoy for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's what I try to tell everybody. I mean, I go, okay, we don't have a break action gun. We, we have mm -hmm. one, but a lot of times we, the bigger sellers or the, the bold action style ones. Yeah, I can break this thing open and it's like this. OK, this is how quick it is. They go, wow, I didn't know that. I go, yeah, it has one extra step because you got to get this breech plug out. But still, if you if you do all the steps right and you, and you clean it, it, it's still it's a lot of fun to shoot this thing. What you're doing, you're starting off the wrong powder. So that's causing you to every every three shots have to clean. And it, it just it's just some people like even me, I would get I start getting frustrated. Yeah. It's, it's just like no fun. It's all, like you said, all the time is wasted on cleaning. And I've been around with people that, you know, that shoot these uh, historic guns and they, you know, they put a swab down there and they clean it and they do the bores. And it's like that, that I, I, I respect that and I love it. I love to be around it. But me personally, I can't do that sometimes because yeah. it's just sometimes too much. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So did you get started in, yeah, you you said you were a machinist. Uh, do you produce other products outside of the muzzleloading industry, or are you now like just totally focused in on muzzleloading? I I, uh, I totally uh, signed my pro my two products I made. I signed them over to Night Rifles, so mm -hmm. they have they have my two products. Okay, and uh, they sell them outright, and they're they're in control of them now. What I started off was I made my own product, and I got a patent on it, made it all the way up to patent pending. And I took it out, and, I, and for five years or six years, I took it out to different shows. I took it down to uh, oh, wow. Rich, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I used to go to uh, shows down there. You know, it was a regular uh, gun shows. Yeah, yeah. And I would sell them. I'd buy, buy a table, and I would sell. I bought like 500 pieces, and I sold them myself. And the, the, the feedback that I got is, is incredible. I mean, you're, you're talking about – if you make something and then somebody actually looks at it and goes, wow, this is nice. It's actually a high, better quality product that, that you see out in the market. It's not going to break as easy. And I really like this. And then you always get the guys that are, that's too expensive. I go, well, I, the reason I kind of got out of this is because it, 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 you have to put so much money into it in order to get the prices down. I yeah. didn't have that. I, I, I can't fully commit because I got a full-time job also. And yeah. my wife has a full-time job. So. I was going every weekend. I was going, like I said, to Timonium, Maryland, the fairgrounds. I'd go down there to a gun show. I'd go up to York, PA, the gun shows. This was every weekend I was going. And I loved doing it. I loved talking to people. But what it was ending up happening was like uh, 
I two months would go where I didn't have a show, and then now you know the bills are coming in, mm-hmm. and I got to get back out there again. So it's it was the point the where where I was at in the business. I didn't like where I was at because I knew it, it just seemed like I was a dead end. Like it just I was still selling, mm-hmm. and I was never getting bad feedback. It's just it wasn't going enough because I knew I was losing products too. Right. So then I had to go out and buy more products. And that's another big investment I was going to do in any ways. And so I started talking around and then I tried a lot of big, big, in, uh, uh, in, uh, big manufacturers. And, uh, you really, it's really tough to get in there. There's a lot of these guys, some of them are real corporate. They, I mean, I, I I'm the type of person I'll knock on your door and I'll knock on your door every single day until I at least get an answer or I'll talk to you. That's awesome. If yeah. I see, if I see you at a show, I'm going to come up and talk to you and say, Hey, this is what I got. Would you be interested in? And there was a couple other manufacturers, big manufacturers that said, yes, they were interested. And then one had to back out cause they were, they had too many of them of the same thing. And then uh, a lot of other people just never got back to me. And mm-hmm. I actually saw a, uh, night up in uh, Harrisburg and I was actually talking to him a show for a couple, three years. I think I ran into him and I think I bugged him for three years and they're, they always laugh at me. Yeah. Here comes, they said, Oh yeah, here comes that, uh, the, the, the northerner. He's up here. the Yankee. He keeps <laughs> bugging us. Yep. But, but, uh, you know, I got to actually talk to them and they liked it. And, and, uh, now they produce my products and, and, uh, it worked out pretty good for me. And I, I get to be a pro staff through them and, I just, I, and really I'm now I'm really hooked on to selling these guns. I, I love, love these guns. They're just, I believe in them. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they're, they are no, they're, they're, they're no joke. They're, I mean, you get them out of the box and they're shooting right on. As long as yeah. you use the right stuff, they're, they're right on. Yeah. That's something that the, you know, at the NMLRA matches. I mean, night is really, I think the go-to favorite for a lot of, you know, as far as production goes. And then even then a lot of the introductory custom guys are building on top of the nights before they get into the super custom stuff. I even hear a lot of that stuff is like, uh, even the super customs are all based off the nights and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And they just arrived from here from these guys. And, and, uh, it's, it's just, Hey, it's proven. It's there. There's again, I mean, you got a, a little history there is, they're make, they make a good product, and I, I really like it. I, I'm I'm trying you know try to get into different stores with them, and trying to sell them in the stores, and it's it's a lot of fun for me. It's I'm still having fun, so I enjoy it. And like I said, I, I don't I don't work full time with them, but we, every every year I go up to the Harrisburg show and I spend ten days with them, and I just pick their brains the whole time I'm up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're a great great bunch of guys. It's it feels like you're back with your best friends from like where you grew up and yeah, we all joke around and it's a lot of fun. And I, I just like, like I said, I try to pick their brains all the time. You know, like I have a problem with this and they go, well, that's, this is why you got the problem. <laughs> yeah. And then I hear, hear all the times, you know, they, uh, you know, they bring up their medals of all their shooting. I'm like, I'm in all of how, how they shoot and like 500 yards and all this stuff and putting out holes. And I'm like, well, that's what I'm going to listen to. I'm not going to listen to anybody else. Right, and I try to convey that back to everybody else. Say, hey, look, I'm not saying this. I I can't do that, but if I really got into it and devoted a whole hundred percent to it, yeah, you probably could. But as I, I do, like I said, I do so many other things. It's, I mean, I I'm not a hundred percent in on it, but I I do. When it comes to muzzle loaders, I love I love shoot my muzzle. I shoot it in rifle season. Mm-hmm. I I shoot I I sh- everywhere I take it out. I shoot I use it. Cause I, if I could, I could put that X on uh, 200 yards and it's going to go down and why would I pick up anything else? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can get behind that, man. I, that was one of the questions I had for you because there's so many things to shoot, um, uh, except for, you know, kind of right now, a lot of modern stuff you cannot find, you know, ammo yeah. or, or primers for, but, yeah. um, you know, why you stick with muzzleloaders was, was on the question list there. I think that's a great answer. You know, if, if it works, why, why change it up? I mean, I, I, I put that crosshair as long as I don't flinch or I don't mess up I, and it, it's going down. I mean, it's, yeah. that's my motto. I, why not? If, if, I mean, I, 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 I even got into a little thing with a guy at one time up there at the show. I said, I could shoot just as good as you can with your rifle. And I said, that's the wrong thing to say to somebody, <laughs> but now you're challenging them. Mm-hmm. 
and it's like, oh boy, I got a little into it. But that's the way that's the passion that I am with it. Yeah, I feel I feel passionate enough with it that anywhere I put it, it's going down. It, it, it's just that simple. I I believe. So you, you talked about starting out with a flintlock, you know, for the Pennsylvania flintlock season. What was your kind of transition or your journey from that to where you're at now? Were there other muzzleloaders in between or was it, you know, from that flintlock up to one of the night rifles? No, it was uh, the flintlock and I let it sit for a while because, uh, you know, I, I, I made a, a bullet starter because that's what it origi- everything originally rated, it originated off of it was a bullet starter. Mm. And I, I broke the bullet starter. It was actually stuck in the barrel still. So I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> wow. and that's what made me mad. So then I set it down for like five years, six years, picked it back up again and said, hey, I can make this thing better. And then, you know, wife, kids, mm-hmm. put it down again. I and mean, we're looking at, uh, I'm the third, uh, let's say 15, 20 years into it. And I still had it and still had the idea. I was brainstorming. And is just eat me alive. I say, man, I could I could sell this thing. I know I can. I know I can. And then, but that's what all started. Everything was the bullet starter. It wasn't true. It wasn't really like getting away from like the uh, flintlock or nothing like that. Right. But once I started seeing my my very first deer I shot was with a with a knife. But my very first gun I bought was a CVA. So I I, I wasn't with knight at the time, but mm-hmm. this is what I just saw because it was more. It was easier to find. Yeah. It was the CVA, and I had a Optima Elite. I wanted to change barrels, and I had had all that fun stuff and all that. But and when I got into selling my products, that's when I got into the night, and I found them, and I was talking to them, and I was like, "Oh man, I'll never go back." Yeah. Is this? I mean, I, I like I said, I used to hang around with the guys who who shot back when the oh well, they were they're shooting two hundred yards with uh freehand with uh, the muzzle loader so mm-hmm. long long barrels and i'm like this is unbelievable these guys <laughs> these guys put three four thousand dollars in these guns they got inlay silver inlay and they and i'm like whoa this is this 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 is some cool stuff yeah but i just i i i just I like i i like to tinker but i can't i can't tinker that much right there's a there's they, certain levels of tinkering that oh, somebody yeah. can go through yeah i i i like to and sometimes go to the store and, and buy it right off the shelf and say, mm-hmm. okay, let's go. When you got to find it, look on, look, look for two weeks, trying to find a certain thing. That's, that frustrates me. Yeah. I'm the type of person I got to have it done right then and there, and, or I got to fix it, or I got to try to make something my, my own. So yeah. what are the, what are the products that you then, uh, you know, that night handles for you now, just so we kind of have an idea of, of what we're talking about. They have a uh, in their in their catalog, their 2018 catalog on their website. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, it says a 28 2018 catalog. Uh, you can actually see both of them in there. Okay. One one's a pack T. It's actually a a, a compact uh, bullet starter. It's actually the the hand the uh, the shaft actually goes into the handle. Okay. And it's more compact and, it, and it's the size of a maglite flashlight. And the other part, the other one is, that's what that's, that's what the original part was. And then I was actually talking to him one day when I, I was getting ready to do something with them. And I seen them actually pull out the ramrod and they're putting it down in the, in the gun. And I go, wait a minute, don't you guys have anything for the end of the barrel? You know, where you put, they go, no, we just use our hand. I go, wait a minute. I go, there gotta be something better than that. <laughs> so I went, I went home and made made something out of aluminum, and if you actually see the uh, what they sell, it's a it's a a, a palm saver. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Is it, it, it the, uh, the power palm? Yeah, I actually made that design that in in two weeks. Huh. I, uh, no, actually in a week because I I I, I came up up the weekend and then I had to meet them the next following weekend and I actually showed them the next weekend. So. But uh, I came up with that, and then when we, uh, I went down to the actual shop, and we, I signed over the stuff to them, and uh, I actually showed them that, and they said, you know what, we're going to make this, and it was a lot quicker that they get that out because they're a plastic company too. Mm-hmm. They make plastics, 
So it was easy for them to make that out. And it's a real hard composite style piece. And uh, that, 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 that sound, sound like crazy off there. And then the other one, it's just taking a little more time to get out on the market because you know, I guess the, the pricing and actually how much it costs to make. Right. So they haven't ha- actually had that out yet. That thing has only been on like for about about two years with them. So. Okay. The Pack T and the Power Palm. Okay, I'm I'm looking Power at them right Palm now. Too. That's really neat. I, <laughs> that's neat to. It's got to be neat for you to see your products in the catalogs and then see people out there using you know the things that you've designed. That's that's the neatest thing. I always wanted to you know somewhere go down and say you know what? Okay, I I, I can't do it myself. I'm not. A, I can't be a big manufacturer or whatever. I just don't the business part of it and all that. Mm-hmm. But to see them to do it, it still is satisfying to me. I mean, just to see a product on anything is, is neat. Just to have anybody say, "Here, I'm going to buy this because I think it's really neat," and just out of the blue and say, "You know, you did a good job here," and I heard a lot of positive stuff about it, and that's what kept me going. Yeah, and I I just love the whole thought of it. And like I said, I mean, a lot of people say. Well, you know, you know we, we, I go, look, just to have your piece, you have something like that and somebody selling it like a big company like that. It, I, I think it's neat to me. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the American dream in a way. Yes. Yes. And then I heard <laughs> going through the things I did, you see what those sometimes what the American dream really is. <laughs> <laughs> How do you mean? Uh, well, it, sometimes the American dream is, can be uh, pretty bad on people because it's like, Sometimes it's how I can steal money from you. Oh, and yeah. Me as, me as a small company, I was trying to, I got my pieces made from a, a machine shop up in uh, York, PA. And two, 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 three years later, I come up to him. I say, hey, look, I might need some new products. And, uh, you know, hey, or can we can we get something going about, I need, might need another 500 pieces. He goes, well, he goes, I've seen uh, – how much you're selling these for on, on the internet. And, uh, I think I'm going to raise you about $2 a piece. <sighs> and I go, you, I go, you literally just killed me. Yeah. I, I go, you, you just don't know how you, how you killed me. I go, I, I could not believe you did that. And Jeez. I walked out of there and I go, now what am I going to do? And yeah. that, this, that kind of broke my back pretty, pretty bad. And, uh, it's very hard to find a manufacturer to make stuff. Yeah, especially and, and yeah, that, I didn't think about that one you can trust as well. Oh man, he 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 had it. I mean, the the pieces I I got from him were made in a Swiss screw machine. My tolerances are like uh, I don't know five to ten thousands, and he could make within millions, right? Without even looking at the piece, so it was so easy for him. But yet he don't he, he to turn around and do that to me and everybody I talked to. Even uh, the owner at night says, man, that is a cardinal rule you just don't do. Yeah. He says, you can't, you just don't do that kind of thing. And, and to do it right in front of your face like that. And I said, that was, that really, that really hurt. That mm-hmm. put a scar on me pretty bad. And, uh, and it's, that's the downfall of it. But I've never had a negative thing said about any of the products. And it's like the old wise, old, old, old thing they say is, uh, if you got a bad product, it's going to rear its head real quick. Mm-hmm. And, it, to this day, it still has not reared its head, so I think I got pretty good products, and and that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me happy, and I try to do the best I can by you know telling everybody, trying to help everybody, and I believe in this stuff. And I don't know, I I never was around it a lot, but I got into it, and then, then I got really passionate about it because it's I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, I I think that's one of my favorite things about Knight is, you know, they're the American made muzzleloader, you know, as far as the production muzzleloaders go and hearing about them working with small businesses and designers like you, you know, I think that kind of adds to it and and supporting those kind of people in that effort, you know, to continue the American muzzleloader tradition, even into the modern muzzleloaders, you know, people, the American muzzleloader, people think the traditional stuff, but Knight is really out front continuing that into kind of the new era yeah i i really believe in them and i I really uh you know like that they did give me an opportunity and you know a lot of people close your doors and unless you you know got a certain amount of money or whatever and Mm -hmm. i i I know the game i i've seen the game and uh 
I, I, I'm really fascinated about business. I love business. It's really something I really was never around until I started dealing with myself. I'm really fascinated about it and uh, the sales and all that stuff. I really like that and, and the designing part, but you know, it's, it can be, <laughs> people can dump a lot of money into it and really lose pretty bad. And uh, mm -hmm. luckily I didn't, I promised my wife the one time I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go so far and if it doesn't work, I'm going to try to try to do something with it. So I kind of held my promise to her. So that's nice. And I still believe I, I made the right decision. And I, I love what I'm doing. I love, I love working with these guys. And I think that, you know, they're a class act uh, company and uh, I really like it. So you're talking about hunting with a muzzleloader a little bit earlier, you know, out there in Maryland, what are you hunting for? And, and what's your, what's your gear, you know, what rifle are you using? What scope? And, and tell us a little about, you know, what you take out and what you go hunting for. I use, I use it for uh, deer hunting, okay. uh, either, either uh, uh doe or buck. I haven't been lucky to get any buck here lately because I don't know what's going on, but, <laughs> but I use it, I use it for uh, rifle season. Also, you know, uh, I, we get an early muzzleloader season out here, good three days before the rut and everything. Once the rut starts, is, is and then they have a youth season, and then those two two seasons are like are the best seasons around here. Okay. And then when it gets into rifle season, usually the rut's over, and it's not you know it's good. To, but the good thing is you get a lot more people in the woods, so that moves them all around. And uh, basically, I'm uh, using using it for uh, rif rifle season, deer hunting, and uh, mostly shooting, bench shooting from uh, the ranges Okay, is my favorite. I like going out there and showing it and saying, hey, look, look at my target. I think I did all right. <laughs> and he, got a, he got like three out of six that are actually in a hole, and it's like, I think I did pretty good. Yeah. But that, that's what I like about it. And, the, the yeah, the game that deer – deer mostly and i used a mount a mountaineer i used a 50 cal okay and uh one in 28 twist and uh i i love it i think it's they got i i got guys telling me that are pros they go they, i think it shoot just as good as a 45 with the right person mm -hmm. with the right loads yep you know i mean not of course not the total distance or whatever but you get 100 200 yards you could shoot right there with them the right person shooting and he said and don't be, he said, don't ever be shy about taking that thing somewhere and using it for a little competition. And, uh, but, uh, Mountaineer, I, I love the Mountaineer. That's a lot of the guys. I, I like to push the Mountaineer. And then, uh, and the, my next one is probably going to be as a 45, 45 cal, one and 20 fast twist. These guys, uh, tell me that's a really, that's a, you can shoot darts with that thing. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the some of the fast twist barrels starting to come into muzzle loading here. I think it's going to be really neat to see what we can do with those. Yes, yeah, so, I mean they that that's every time I talk about it, it oh yeah, you went to 45 one and one and 20, one and 20. And I'm like, I never even heard of this thing in it, but that's what everybody's going to and you see that a lot on the forum. Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Oh yeah, that that's the new thing." And these guys were telling me about it. But at the time when I got my first one, they didn't have it. Right. I had a 45, but it wasn't a one in 20. I don't think it was something else. We're starting to see some like one in 18 and one in 16 twists, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, our, uh, night 500, I think is a one in 16. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Then that's, that's, the that's our, uh, flagship for, uh, the competition guns. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, the one in 20 is not too far off, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it's, it's I, that's what I like shooting. I, and I'm trying, like I said, I'm, my next gun is going to be probably an ultralight from a, uh, the faster twist mm -hmm. just to try to get a little bit more accurate, try to get more, you know, I really stress on the accuracy, more range shooting. Yeah. That's what I want to do with it more. So do you do any uh, competitions with it or are you just kind of going to the range just for some, just for a range day to, to shoot some? Just good. I just go to the range day and uh, just like to try to get out there with people and show, show, show what's going on. Mm -hmm. I like to try to just to see whatever I can do, you know, with just, uh, just from the bench from one bean bag and that's it. I try to try to, uh, every, like I said, every time I go to Harrisburg with these guys, I spend like 10 days with them and I try to, you know, 
hey, you know, how, how do you really set up? What are you actually thinking? Are you actually putting pressure? You know, where are you putting your pressure and all this? I try to pick their brains and then I try to use it to help me. But uh, I'm, competition wise, I, I don't know if I'll ever get really into competition. But uh, I just enjoy going out there shooting and showing everybody what we got and mm-hmm. how, how I, you know, here's the basics. Yeah. The reason don't 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 slam that that, that stick up and down and bang on it. <laughs> now you're, you're deforming the plastic piece on the tip. Yeah. You, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I've seen that, but it's just I have a lot of fun with it. I, I, I like it. Everybody, everybody looks at me. Why you? Why you use a muzzler? I, I go. I don't know. I just something about it. I like it. It's more of a challenge. I don't. I don't have to go. Oh, I got to worry about the second, third, fourth, fifth shot. Hey, I just pick a better shot. That's all. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. I mean, Make ideally, it. anyway, you only need one shot. You know, and if you're really focused, and you're really, you know, going for that ethical shot, you're waiting for that one perfect shot. Yeah, it keeps me more disciplined, and I pick out the right thing. I could have shot so many doe this year, but I was like, it just doesn't seem like the big one. Doesn't seem like the bigger one. Doesn't mm-hmm. seem like the bigger one. And I, I there was a seven pointer. I had him up on a hill, to, and uh, he came up behind me, and me and this other guy were kind of you know within like fifty yards of each other, and he must have smelled us. He literally <laughs> turned around, bolted back up on top of the hill, and I figure he's a a good. 80 yards away and i had like a perfect shot perfect chest shot chest shot on him like okay i can i can get this guy no problem like see he had a you know, i guess a nice decent little seven pointer i go that, that'd be a nice first deer for the year and then i'm going whoa wait a minute wait a minute i'm on a hill here i don't know what's on the other side of the hill and mm. i'm like nah i'm not doing it yeah and, and there, there's so many times i could have shot this year and i just past couple of years i just don't because I don't know. I try to, it, it slows me down. It, it makes me more disciplined. Yeah. You know, I guess I, you know, I, I could have shot him. I had no problem, but you don't know what's on the other side of the hill. Yeah. They, I tell, th- you, they tell you not to do that. So yeah. Being responsible, you know, keeps hunting going and it, it keeps, you know, keeps us all able to do this. You know, the less problems that we put out there as sportsmen, the less problems that come back to us. Yeah. I mean, I had, at one time, I was down at a private farm, and they had, uh, had 22 stands on it. And it was 400 acres, and the one guy was shooting. He kept missing the deer, and I actually heard them going over my head. And I'm ducking behind a tree, and I'm going, oh, this is not good. This is not good. I, I, he, the thing was like 35 yards from me. He was missing it. Oh, man. I could, t- I, I could hear it going whizzing by me. I'm going, oh, man, this ain't good. And uh, I, I, I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that anybody that would. That sounds terrifying. No, I, it, that was kind of things stuck in my head. I got to make sure I know exactly where I'm shooting. Yeah. And I won't go out there. If anything, I change my scope or anything, boom, I'm going right to the range. And I, I, I got to know where that thing's shooting. Mm-hmm. I won't have a gun sitting in my cabinet unless I know exactly where it shoots. So I can just grab it and take it out and go. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be fussing around with it when it counts. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think it's ethical. I don't think I, I'm not, I don't deer hunt per se. You know, two months, you know, four weeks straight every single day or nothing like that. I go a couple of times. I go about ten times a year, and I, I devote. You know, like I say, if it's going to be a nice couple of days, I'll go three days in a row, and mm-hmm. then. Probably won't go in a, for a couple weeks or something like that until another another couple weeks or something. But yeah, you know, I'm not a hundred percent fanatic about it. But like I said, I do a lot of stuff, so I sometimes I I, I can't do it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could, but yeah, seeing some people online, you know, that seem like they're out hunting and camping all the time. Man, it seems like they're living the dream. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I I like to know what dream they're living because I'm not living the dream. I yeah. don't think. <laughs> doing all right, but <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I'm still having fun, so that's what keeps me going. Yeah, that's what counts. So th- I think the last question I got to ask is: Can you give us any details on this night, Peregrine, that w- that we're going to see coming out here in June? Uh, I I I really can't. I don't know anything about it be honest with you uh I i'm not i they they're in athens tennessee 
and I wish I was closer to him because I know I would know about it and I would be probably shooting it right now. <laughs> but uh, I actually just contacted my boss the other day in charge of the, the uh, pro staff and mm-hmm. we're trying to get into a store down here. And I go, look, I, the guys really want, really interested in the 40. And I go, really, I don't have nothing to tell him. I don't, I don't know anything about it. And he goes, you know, and I guess he, I'm sure he's going to give him the information, but I really don't know anything about it. Yeah. They're keeping it close, close to the chest then. I knew about it, but yet I don't know about it. Right. Right. A little while ago, but I just don't, I, 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 I've seen the one picture with our boss or whatever, or somebody had it, had it. And, uh, that was about it. And it's all I, I, I've never really seen a gun up close. I couldn't tell you what it looks like. Okay. Couldn't tell you anything about it. Well, nevertheless, Sorry. I'm excited about it. <laughs> I think a lot yeah, of Muslims out here. Everybody is now. They're all like, because I just got somebody messaged me the other day. He goes, well, what do you, what, what gun do you like? I go, well, I, I use the Mountaineer. He goes, no, what do we well, talk about the 40? Are you, you going to get the 40? I go, well, I go, I'll tell you, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't. I don't know nothing about it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's going to, you know, be exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see, I think, you know, some new muzzleloaders come out every couple of years, um, but it, it's neat to see. It seems like we have a lot of releases here in 2021. I'm, I'm excited to see how this shakes up, both in the, you know, in the hunting scene, but also in the competition scene. I think these tight 40s are going to be going to be really interesting to see on the range. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. I mean, basically, basically, when I see everything is when I go to the Harrisburg show. Okay, I'll be up there ten. I'll be up there ten days, and that's where they literally bring them out. They have to, we have the rifle. It's not by no, night or nothing, but it's uh, our own rifle they have. And uh, it, I I saw it for the first time. I knew about. It. I knew it was coming out, and I knew a lot of a little bit about it. But uh, that was the first time I got to see it was up there. And, oh, man, I fell in love with that, too. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait to see this 40 come out. I mean, and then, like, even the ball, even the guy down, there's a store down here yesterday goes, okay, with the 40, now what kind of bullshit you shoot out? I go, oh, my God, you guys, guys are asking me. I shouldn't even reset it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys know all this stuff. I don't know all those. I don't know those answers yet. I will know, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you give everybody a taste and we're all back for more. Yeah. I wish I could tell you. I wish I could show you. I wish I had it. I wish I had that. But that's one of the things about living where I live. I'm out of the loop. I wish I was in the loop. Oh, like I said, okay. even, even down there at the manufacturers, they get they get one day a, day a year, one day a month, where they go, go to the range. Oh, wow. They, yeah, they go range day. And I wish I had that. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds they great. They shoot everything they got. And it's like, oh, man, I'm missing out everything. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I get to see it at the end of the year or whatever, but so. Well, this has been great, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Oh, I, I, I had a lot of fun. I, was, I, I didn't, I never done anything like this, but like I said, I think I, I can talk about muzzle loaders all day and shooting and the little things I, I've done. And I like I like talking, I'll talk my ear. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the point where I'm up Paris where I got, I got to start be quiet because my throat starts hurting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you my secret for this is I always brew a cup of tea with a cough drop in it before I do any interviews like this because it, oh, you always get hoarse afterwards. Oh yeah, I, I could see that because uh, I get I get long winded. I get I get going on something and I I go oh wait wait wait, wait, wait. we got to get back to the subject. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. Re- appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, like I said, uh, most of the time I see you see me on there is trying to help out the you know, the beginners and stuff like that and trying to get them steer them right. And, you know, you got to have a start off with a good gun. Then you got to have the powder. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I, I believe in the bullets and I'm in the powder and the bullets The start. You got to start, you got to start right. Yeah. And that's my philosophy. Can't thank Jamie enough for coming onto the show and talking with us about his experience about night rifles. It's really exciting to talk about night rifles because of their history with the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association, especially as we head into the 2021 Spring National Shoot here, June 12th through 20th in Friendship, Indiana. If you want to find out more, you can head on over to NMLRA.org. Our big red button at the center of the homepage is going to have everything that you need to start planning your trip and start organizing to get ready for the spring nationals 
It's really the hotbed of muzzleloading and black powder competition for the year, really second only behind the national championships in September. But even if you're not interested in muzzleloading and black powder competition, there's a ton of other things to do. We have traditional craftsmen set up demonstrating American crafts and how to do things the old way, the cool way, really. Um, and we also have a ton of different muzzleloading and living history supply shops and vendors coming in to sell their wares. So if you've been kind of cooped up and suffering from the shipping delays that we all have been over the past year or so, you can head to the NMLRA Nationals, buy in person, handle everything, see it, touch it, buy it, and you know, really help out a lot of small businesses out there that have been supporting muzzleloading for generations now. To find out more, visit nmlra.org. I'd like to thank you so much again for watching and listening. We can't thank you enough. If you want to support what we're doing here at Muzzle Blasts, you can head over to nmlra.org join. For as little as $3 a month, you can support the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association. Thank you.